In this CC3D video, what we're going to do is connect a GPS to our little CC3D board. A couple of things we probably need to remind ourselves about though, if you're watching these videos in series, then this is stuff that we covered in the very first video in the series, um, but let's just cover it in case it's something that you haven't thought about for a while. The GPS addition to the CC3D is probably one of the most complicated but least useful for this board. Because of its lack of an onboard magnetometer and lots of memory, there isn't room for any GPS code and even if there was, because the magnetometer isn't on here, it wouldn't work. So the addition of a GPS is purely to have the coordinates either part of a telemetry downlink or to appear in an on-screen display. And in the previous video we actually did a minim OSD connection. So if we have a GPS connected and working, we can enable the GPS displays on the on-screen display and see that information in our goggles. To do this, we're going to need a couple of extra pieces. The first thing we're going to need is one of these things. Yes, it's an FTDI adapter. We're going to need one of these because we're actually going to need to plug it into the GPS to configure it so that the protocol speed and information that the GPS is sending is what the CC3D is expecting. We're going to need to download a little bit of software and do a little bit of configuration just like we did with the Minim OSD and with some of the other things that we've seen on the channel. In the video we're going to connect the FTDI to the GPS, then we'll configure it, um, we'll show you how to do all the wiring, then we're going to use a piece of software that we'll download to actually upload a configuration file via the FTDI adapter to the GPS unit so that it has the right settings. Then we'll show you how to connect the GPS to the CC3D using one of the cables that comes supplied in the kit. Uh, we can either plug it into the flexi port or the main port. I'll just stick it in the main port today for simplicity. Then we'll go into Open Pilot and we'll actually tell Open Pilot that um, the CC3D has a GPS connected. There's two or three steps in there that we need to do. And then the GPS should burst into life and we'll be able to see our location on the globe. A couple of uh, troubleshooting things we can do to make sure it all works, um, the couple of gotchas that we'll cover as well, and then we'll finish the video. So the first thing we need to talk about is how we're gonna connect the GPS to the FTDI adapter to plug it in. Now this FTDI adapter is actually one that I keep in my kit ready to configure GPSs. I do it that often. So um, the cabling is all done. On the bottom of most GPS modules, hopefully this is gonna, there we go. It actually tells you what the ground uh, plus five volts receive and transmit pins are. So on the FTDI adapter, it also does a similar thing. There we go. TXO, RXI, plus five volts and ground. So it's a simple case of plugging one into the other. So let's just put a quick diagram up. So here is the wiring diagram. So the plus five volts goes to the plus five volts on the GPS, grounds goes to ground, the transmit pin on the FTDI goes to receive pin on the GPS and vice versa. Once we have that plugged in, then we're ready to plug it into the computer. So here's mine all connected. So now I'm gonna plug this into the computer and we'll download a little bit of software and have a look at what the GPS is doing and configure it up. So before we plug in our FTDI adapter that's connected to the GPS, there's a couple of things that we need to do on the laptop first. Let me show you a couple of places on the internet that might be interesting. First of all, uh, let me just draw your attention to the fact that there is a written document in the Open Pilot Wiki that talks about adding a GPS for telemetry purposes to a CC3D. And this is very similar to what we're actually going through here. So if you wanted to read a document that takes you through all the different steps, there it is. Second thing we need to think about is we need to get hold of the Open Pilot file. Now it actually links in here a link to the file location and it'll take you to here. And this is the actual GNSS configuration file that we're gonna upload onto the GPS itself. Now, disappointingly, I've found it very difficult to find exactly what they've changed 
in the GPS configuration to make it work with the CC3D. So we're just going to have to trust that this is right and upload the configuration file. Now what I've actually done is I've uh, already saved this into a file onto my desktop because I found it really tricky to actually um, download. So I've actually cut and copied this into a file. Interestingly, it always seems to be talking about the Neo 6M, so I think that is the module that you should try and get hold of if you're trying this, and it does down here give an indication of what has actually needed to be configured on the GPS for it to work with the Open Pilot firmware. Last thing we're going to need then is our GNSS configuration software. If you Google for GNSS configuration software, then you'll actually find the one you're after. It's here, the GPS U Center Windows. If we click on there, it'll take us to the official U Block site and we can download the software from here. It, there are also available uh, versions for Android and other platforms, but we've obviously using Windows. So I've already downloaded that too. So here's that file that we were looking at before. I've copied and pasted it into a text file. So let's see if that's going to work. And then I've also got the uCenter bits and pieces running as well. So we're at the point now where we should plug in our GPS and see what happens. Now this is actually a GPS and it's plugged in that I've used before, so I know it's configured. I've actually configured this one for used with multi-Wii boards, and the multi-Wii actually uses a configuration file as well, but is going to set it up for 115200. So I'm just gonna click up here, top left-hand corner, and click Connect. Here we go, we're working. So we have our latitude, longitude, we have a 3D lock. We can see that the GPS is working beautifully. We can also see at the bottom that it's running at 115200. Um, if you're not sure of the speed or you're trying to connect and it doesn't connect, it, for your GPS module, I try each of the board rates in turn. Or you can turn on something called auto boarding and that will try and figure out what the board rate is of the GPS that you've plugged in. Now the configuration file that we're going to upload is going to change the board rate from the 115200 that we're running at right now down to, I think it's configured for 38400. So we're going to have to update this file. So we're going to go into Tools, GNSS Configuration. We're going to find the configuration file. Now that's obviously going to be on the desktop because that's where I downloaded mine too and what I'll do is I'll actually put a link to this file that I've created from that website so that you can just download it easily click on open we're going to click file to GNSS right store in non-volatile memory we're going to click on that there we go it's actually trying to upload all the pieces It's now trying all the different speeds. There we go, we're back connected at 38400. That looks like it's working. Okay, so we're now connected, if you look at 38400, we still have our 3D lock. That looks like the configuration file worked on our GPS. Interestingly, this GPS is a CN06, a uh, slightly different variant of the uh, version 6 U blocks bits and pieces, but that seems to be happy. So I'll go as receiver, action, save config. Now we're ready to unhook this and plug it into the CC3D. So let's look at a wiring diagram of how we're going to do that. So here we have our GPS unit. I've disconnected the FTDI cable and I've made up this little cable here that connects to one of the cables that came with the kit that's going to plug into either the main or the flexi port. And what I've done is I've connected the plus to plus, ground to ground, the transmit to receive and receive to transmit just as we did when we were connecting the FTDI adapter. So if we look at that very quickly in a diagram form, so here is our CC3D on the left hand side. So obviously we're going to connect the ground to the ground on the GPS unit. We're going to connect the plus five volts to the plus five volts. And then we're going to connect the receive to transmit 
and transmit to receive to make and make sure we've got those two wires crossed over. It can be very easy to make the mistake of having the transmit and receive not crossed over so that's one of the first things I check if we have a problem when we come to check it. So I've actually finished making my cable, I've actually uh, made this little junction here so that we don't have to solder anything. So I'm going to just plug this into the main port of the CC3D. And now we're ready to connect this back up to OpenPilot back on the netbook and go through the three or four configuration steps that we need to to get this GPS configured actually on the CC3D itself. So back to the netbook. So we're back on the PC and we're back in OpenPilot. So we're going to connect the board just via the USB cable at the moment. You'll notice when you plug it in that the GPS isn't powered by the USB cable. We actually have to have plus 5 volts connected to one of the ESC 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6 connections. So if it's already plugged into a craft, then you're going to have to install your I and mean, connect your flight battery in order for the GPS to be powered to set this up. I'm actually going to cheat and I'm going to use a little separate UBEC connected to a 3 cell battery. And I'm just going to plug that into one of the ESC ports to provide the power for the ESC. But that's later in the process. At the moment, all we're going to do is connect the board via the USB cable. So let me plug it in and we can start to configure. So there we are, we're connected. So in hardware settings, there's a couple of things we're obviously going to need to change. The first is we need to tell the port that it's connected to GPS. We also need to set the GPS speed to what it's going to be running at. We know that's 38400 board. You'll notice though that the GPS protocol section is actually greyed out. I can't get into that. There's one extra step we need to do. We need to jump into system. And if you scroll through here, you'll find that there's a hardware setting tab that you can open and in hardware settings if you go down there's one called optional modules and there's one called GPS. What we need to do is click on that and enable it then we need to set those settings to the board and go back into config. Now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to reboot the board, disconnect the USB cable and reconnect it so that we can come back in and actually set this up. So let me just save this configuration as well. Let me unplug the board and replug it back in and then we should be able to set the GPS protocol. So let me do that now. That's the board unplugged. We'll plug the board back in and it'll restart with the GPS bits and pieces enabled now because it knows the modules there and hopefully There we go. We have the option to select the protocol. Now uh, UBX or UBlox is the one that we want. So now we know it's set 38400 UBlox, everything looks good. If we go into the flight controller bits and pieces, you'll notice though that it's still showing that the GPS isn't working. And that's because the GPS actually isn't powered right now. To power the GPS, we need to plug in the power of the main flight battery, if it's connected into your model, or connect a battery eliminator circuit of plus 5 volts to the one of the ESC connections on the side. Once we've done that, then the GPS will burst into life. It'll start searching. As you can see down here, it's now connected. So now we're getting a GPS signal. And if I zoom in on the location that the GPS thinks we're at, zoom in a little bit more. A little bit more than that. There we go that's where we are on the globe. If we zoom in a little bit more you'll see it's actually wandering around. It isn't absolutely perfect, um, it's actually wandering um, around the back of the house where we're actually shooting the video. So that is how you do it. So you need to go through the process, you need to set everything up and um, go through each of the steps in the video. As I said at the beginning, personally I'm not a massive fan of this. I don't think it works particularly well. I don't think it's a great change 
or addition to the CC3D. I think there are better things to spend your time and effort on. Uh, if you want to get a board, remember you need to get the Neo 6M board and you need to go through the process and set it up. It will not allow you to use the GPS configuration bits and pieces and it won't use GPS flight modes so it won't allow you to do GPS hold or GPS return to home. This will only allow you to present the GPS coordinates via either telemetry or via your on-screen display. So hopefully that's interesting for those of you that wanted to know about GPS. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.